Hello, my friends. My name is Chris, and this is Virillo Trading. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to replicate a Finviz stock scanner on Interactive Brokers TWS software. I'm going to be using the TWS desktop platform, which has been around for quite a few years at this point. It's quite stable um, on Windows, and I'm going to be using it on Windows, and I'm going to show you how to replicate the scanner. So if you enjoy this content, let me know down below. And what I'm going to do basically is go and grab a scanner that looks something like this, I'll drag it over. Um, and you can see here, this is what a Finviz Elite scanner would look like. Um, there's many different parameters you can put in. What we're gonna use is an advanced scanner in TWS, and I'm gonna use a, some form of a watch list, so that way we can input the tickers into our watch list and trade the tickers from there. All right, so there's two ways that I'm gonna recommend you to do this in TWS. One way, which would be, I think, the recommended way for trading. If you're planning on doing active trading from the TWS software, this is the way that I would do it myself. It would be to kind of completed your trade window, what I call the trade window, whatever window you use for trading. In my case, it's going to look something like this, where we have a quote monitor. The quote monitor is a very good window in TWS because it allows you to see your quotes, your symbols, and your active orders and open positions all from the same window. Um, whereas a lot of the other windows in TWS only kind of show you partial bits of information. Okay, so this is an example of how I would trade a stock if it was already in my watch list. So you can see this stock is already here and I can just press a button to prompt an order. I can see the order is there. And if we were to buy this stock or sell the stock, we would then see our position appear here um, and it would allow us to get a better view on exactly what is going on. In this first method here, the way we would scan for a stock is we would open up the scanner by going to new window and then scanners and then advanced market scanner. And we would simply keep the scanner unattached from the main TWS window. So as you can see here, the scanner is unattached. I can minimize the parent application and this scanner will still be here. So this would be method number one. The second method would be to actually create another layout in the mosaic uh, layouts here at the bottom and use that layout specifically for scanning. Now that's good too. The disadvantage with this particular method is that when it comes to inputting your scan results into a watch list or dragging in certain symbols from the scanner into your watch list, that's going to be a little bit more um, of an extra step. It might be a little bit annoying. So this is why I would prefer having a scanner unattached from the parent application window. So that way, once you have your ticker symbols, you can then go ahead and drag the symbol directly into your watch list like I did there. And now you can see I have this new symbol here in my watch list, CNET. Now, if you had to input, you know, multiple symbols at once, that would be probably a bit of a different process. You might want to export it into some sort of an Excel document. Ideally, if you can replicate your scan right here, and you know, use the scan results to get your symbols for trading and then you know, do your trading, that would be the simplest and most efficient way to do things. If you need more advanced scanner parameters that are not available in the advanced scanner, then you're gonna to have to either number one, rely on a different scanner like Finviz, or number two, create a custom scan using their TWS API and really fine tune the scanner to your heart's desire, although that's gonna take more work. Okay, so here's an example of our advanced scanner in TWS. We opened it up by going to new window, scanners, advanced scanner. I'm gonna replicate a basic scan to scan for stocks that have gapped down on the day by a certain percentage and that have a certain amount of um, shares float. So what we can start here with is we need to tell the scanner what market we want to be trading. So I will select US stocks in this case because that's what the user requested. US stocks. And then if you want to remove small caps, you can do that here by unchecking small cap, but I'll leave it checked for now. And then you can fine tune it afterwards. Um, for this example, I will select price of stocks $5 and up. So I will put a five right here under the filters field. On the right side here where it says parameter, this is where you set up the general scan, like what it is you're actually scanning for. So if you're scanning for stocks that are up on the day, you're gonna select top percentage gainer. If you're scanning for stocks that are down on the day, you'll select top percent losers. And then here in the middle where we have the filters, basically when you click here, add filter, you get a list of different filters that looks like this. And this is a finite list of filters, meaning that you can only choose from these ones. So what I will start with is scroll down and find a few parameters. I will add the EMA 50 
I will add shares available, which would represent the float, the number of shares that are available currently in the market for trading. The next items I will add here is change since the open in percentage, as well as gap percentage, because this is quite a popular item for traders that trade momentum-based strategies on stocks. That's all, I'm gonna close this now, I'll press OK. And you can see that these items have been populated into the scanner. This is where you have to now go in and put in values into these boxes to um, set up these fields. So let's say you wanted to search for stocks that are a minimum of 1% down on the day. You would change that first box to less than, and then you would say one here in this box. Now let's go ahead and create the search by pressing search and we'll look at some of the scanner results to see what it gives. If you guys get value out of this content, let me know with a comment down below and check out Interactive Brokers using the first link down below in the description. And that's an easy way to return the favor if you enjoyed these videos and they help out, thank you. So now you can see we have stocks that are down on the day, very clearly down on the day. Now, what we want to do is obviously filter this a little bit more. So what we can now do is set up a gap percentage. So now we want stocks that have gapped down by a minimum of, let's say, I don't know, 3%. So we will change this to less than and then set three in the right side box. Shares available, let's say we want a stock with a minimum of 1 million float. So I'll put 1 million there. The price has to be greater than five and the volume on the day could be greater than one M. In some of the boxes, you can put an M like that and some of them you can't. I know it's a little bit inconsistent, but for volume, you can just write one M and it, it knows that you mean 1 million shares. So I adjusted some of the scan parameters here just to test out a few things. Um, and uh, so I've set most of these items to less than since we're scanning for stocks that are down on the day. And the only thing that's set to greater than is the price and the shares available. Another thing you can do is at the top right, you can choose how many results you wanna get. So if you wanna get like a maximum of 20 or 30 of them, you can select it here and then search and then see how it changes the results based on the gap scan that you're doing. When you click on one of the columns in the scanner, you can sort the list by that column. So when I click on gap percent, you can see I am sorting by the number, by the amount of the gap basically. So this one has the largest gap on the day. So here's an example of a chart that gapped down. So let's click on this one right here, LESL. And I have overnight hours enabled on my chart. If you can't see the overnight hours, then you go up to edit chart parameters and go all the way to the bottom. My chart font is set very big and uh, the windows appear that way. So at the very bottom where we have chart time options, where it says show data outside of regular trading hours, this should be on in TWS in your chart parameters. If you wanna see overnight trading and pre-market trading. So in this case, you can see the market closed the prior day at, um, Let's say it was, you know, $5.71, something like that. And then the next day here, so this is a 9.15 bar. It's a pre-market trading bar. So the actual open would have been here at 5.50. So the gap down would have been from 5.72 down to 5.50. And that might equate to whatever percentage um, gap down that was displayed over here for LESL. So the user requested one parameter, which was 50-day simple moving average. Now, in the scanner parameters of the advanced scanner, there's no simple moving average. If you scroll down to general, you'll see EMA, but you will not see SMA. The difference between an EMA and an SMA is pretty small. In fact, I would say EMA is even better because it gives more weight to recent prices, whereas the SMA takes an average of every single price over the 50 days, basically, and it averages them all out, which really is kind of arbitrary in a way. I think it kind of presents an arbitrary number, an SMA. It's just an average of all of the closing prices of the last 50 days, but it's not taking into account volume. It's not taking into account any additional market context at all. It's just giving you an average of all the prices over the last 50 days, closing prices that is. Whereas EMA is also arbitrary, but it gives more weight to more recent closing prices compared to all of them equally weighted. In FinViz, it's set to price is above the 50-day simple moving average. In this example, you're not actually seeing that. So if I select here less than 50-day and then I search, we're pretty much getting the same results here. But what you might find is that a lot of these stocks on a daily time frame, 
if you go ahead and put the 50 EMA on the chart, you'll find that a lot of the stocks are actually below that 50 EMA anyways. And you can double check that yourself. So I'll do that by going to studies and then moving averages, exponential moving average, add it to the chart. Now I have to minimize my window because it's too big. My font size is too big. And then I will change this to 50 and then I will click apply at the bottom and you'll see here's the 50 EMA appeared on the chart. If I cycle through some of the tickers on the scan, you can see most of them so far are below that 50 EMA. This one isn't, however, this one is not, however. Another scan that you might wanna try out here. So if you select top close to open losers, you're basically getting the stocks with the most gap down. So let's see what this returns. Change since open, gap percentage. So there you go. You pretty much have it right there. So basically this one right here is the gap scanner. Top close to open percentage gainers or losers. But I wanted to show you as well that you can do it with any of the other scans as well. But if you wanted specifically a gap scanner, it would be probably these two right here. So what you can do is compare the results you get here to Finviz and then take it from there. Now, when it comes to trading these symbols, like I said, this is a method that you can use. So ideally you want two monitors. I'm showing this to you on one monitor. But what I would do is I would drag the scanner over to a second monitor or I would minimize it to a degree here so it's not so big. And then what I would do is once you know which tickers you wanna be trading, I would then go ahead and just simply drag them into the watch list like that. And let's say I have these top three tickers now in my watch list, I can minimize the scanner and now I can go ahead and trade them directly from here. Okay, now there might be some other windows you want to use for your trading in TWS. I don't know. It depends on the trader. You might be getting your analysis from a completely different software too. So that's something you might want to consider. Um, but just to let you know, this is one of the best windows for trading in TWS. It's the quote monitor. The way you access this window is by going to new window all the way at the bottom, go to more advanced tools and then find quote monitor. Just give it a name and then layout can be default unless you've already configured a layout. Uh, in the past. If you haven't, then leave it on default. Just give it a name and then you're going to get a window up here that looks like this right here. And then you can click on this plus icon to bring up more quote monitors, which is very good and very useful. I hope the video helped and let me know. Thank you.